the point is very interesting point here there are formulas related to this chapter one formula was refractive index equal to and what was it refractive index equal to sine of i over sine of r where i is the angle of incidence and r is the angle of refraction then you have another formula speed of light in air or sometimes we call it vacuum because we are believing that speed are almost the same there is a small difference only divided by speed of light in medium now you tell me guys what do you think how do you reckon the speed of refract i mean uh, the refractive index value will that be greater than 1 or shall be smaller than 1 what do you like estimate about this yes anyone the speed of light in vacuum is more and the speed of light in medium in any medium will be less so what do we expect the value of refractive index will be more than 1 or less than 1 yes guys more than 1 or less than 1 it's actually more than 1 always remember refractive index will always come more than 1 now one of my thing is what i'm asking you in here there is another formula which i was actually telling you previously refractive index is equal to 1 upon sin c where c is critical angle so critical angle you take a sin of and then you reverse it it will be equal to a refractive index of the material okay hello mo bula rahi hai hello okay so any problems guys anybody have any question related to total internal reflection or the formulas which are given here no okay so let's move further then this actually okay this phenomena what is the practical application of this so practical application is fiber communication do you know everyone knows what fiber communication is fiber communication means fiber optics communication let me show you what the fiber communication is fiber actually gives you a very fast speed because actually in fiber communication the signal travels with the speed of light fiber optics is like this it's like this let me just see this is your fiber optics which is used for the long communication if you see this fiber optics communication in fiber optics communication we use this phenomena but i am just talking about total internal reflection the reason will be that in fiber optics communication we want that our light will continuously pass like this so in here because here the the light signal which we are actually passing into the fiber fiber is this much actually thin so when you pass the light in we don't want the signal to be getting out of the fiber can you tell me why you don't want the signal to be getting out of the fiber because each light signal is having a data into that so we don't want our data to be lost to save the data from the lost we need this critical angle of that fiber the reason is if you know the critical angle of the fiber then the things will be very easy for us because in that way all the light will be actually going into the fiber like for example if i know that this is a fiber let's suppose and if i know the critical angle of this material of fiber through which the light is passing then i will throw that light more than the critical angle let's suppose the more than critical angle is 22 degrees 
now i am dropping this or i am following this fiber i mean following this light at 21 degrees so now when i fold this light on 21 degree then all the light will go into the fiber and no light will come out of the fiber so in that way our data will be safe and actually passing through the fiber so my point is only that fiber communication is the example of using this total internal reflection Understood? Guys, any question? Certainly, it's going to come. See, but my point is actually, because in fiber communication, our main signal is a light signal. Okay? Because your data will be traveled in the form of light. So, we don't want that data to be actually going into the air. Consider this as your fiber medium right so if you dropping a general light signal then most of the light will go out of the you know fiber so in that way your data will start losing so for example if you say hello maybe l or o will reach at the output and he will lost so what we will do we will throw the light more than the critical angle into the fiber so that all the light will actually reverse or you can say reflect back into the same medium and it will go like this so what happened light will go in light will remain in the fiber and no light will be lost or you can say no light will go out of the medium okay so light will go in the same medium and it will continuously going on and on and on and on and no light signal will be lost by the way the speed of light in a vacuum is equal to 3 into 10 to power 8 meter per second so this is the speed of your data when you're using fiber communication remember that all the communication which is happening in our country is through the fiber communication i'm not talking about the house communication at the back end all the data internet data telephonic data satellite data will be going through this fiber communication all the all over the world all right now the other part which we were doing last time was reflection and total internal reflection or i can summarize it as tir can anybody tell me what is the difference between reflection and total internal reflection i have told you last time but let's recapitulate it again what is i mean what is the difference between ordinary reflection or total internal reflection sir total internal reflection has um, two conditions um, which are it should go from denser to near medium and the incidence must be given in the critical column. Absolutely. And Absolutely. for normal, for normal effects, those things are not required. So you can say one by one, right? So take it as a point. If, for example, this question comes for two to three marks, then make it as a point. Here, the first one is for reflection, there is no need for any angle of incidence or anything. So basically, the best way in this phase is reflection simple means rebound back of the light or rebound back of the light into the same medium. Assalamualaikum, sir. Wa Okay, uh, Armina, I will also tell you as well. From now on, like you are just late for 20 minutes. So for that, you definitely start losing. That so what I will do, I will record this and I will upgrade it. I mean, I will upload it, okay? So you can talk to the coordinator regarding this and you can have this lecture recording if you want. Okay? Okay, sir. Because you were recording last time, so I better found it that if somebody lost or somebody missed some class, then he or she will be able to take it. For, but for that reason, you need to talk to the coordinator about it. All right? Okay. Now, the, the same case is here. Here, it's not just rebounding back. You can say, on TIR, you can say that all the light rebounds into the same medium or reflect back into the same medium and no light is refracted. So it means that in total internal reflection, no light will go back or no light will be refracted. Totally light or you can say totally light rebounds into the 
same meaning. You can add one more point into the reflection that during the reflection, during the reflection, refraction occurs at the same time during reflection. So you can say some of the light is refracted as well as some of the light is reflected during the reflection. On the other side, all the light reflected into the same medium and no light will be refracted. That's a point in TIR. Guys, any problem in this? No. And what about you three guys? Ibrahim, Armina, and Ashtar? Um, no, sir, no doubts. Okay. Okay. Ashtar, okay. Now, what is the second point? Second point must be the angle of critical angle. Critical angle, you can say. So, you can say that for reflection, there is no need for any critical angle. Reflection occurs at any angle. While in TIR, the condition is the angle of incidence must be greater than the critical angle of the material through which uh, the light is passing through. So, for a TIR, critical angle, I mean, I mean, the angle of incidence must be greater than the critical angle. All right. So, these are the two points or two differences between reflection and TIR, which is total internal reflection. Yes, guys, any issues in this? Sir, can you repeat? Okay, see, once again, in reflection, the first point is the rebound back of the light into the same medium. But in reflection, remember that while the light is reflecting, or you can say reflection into the same medium, at the same time, some of the light is refracted as well. What my point is, that reflection and refraction occurs at the same time. If most of the light is reflected back, some of the light is refracted as well into another medium. While in Fi, in TIR, all the light is reflected into the same medium and no light will be refracted, not a single beam. All the light will be reflected into the same medium. That is the definition TIR is. Okay, this is the one point. And the second point is, in reflection, there is no condition for any critical angle or anything like this. Reflection occurs at all angles. While TIR, your angle of incidence must be greater than the critical angle. Right? All right. Now, there is another difference at this point which needs to be known to you. And that is your <laughs> the difference is electric communication and fiber communication. Electric communication and fiber communication. What are the difference? Fiber communication and electric communication. Electric communication is the normal communication which we have. Remember that in electric communication, in electric communication, the signals or you can say electric signals will be traveling In electric communication, the electric signals will be traveled through the wire from one point to the other. 
this is for the electric communication whatever communication you will have through the wires remember that and what about in fiber communication ibrahim what do you expect anybody fiber communication in fiber certainly electric communication again see in electric communication your signals through which the data is transferred is electric signal you know that current i am talking about current signal like whatever data is transferred from one point to another point that is your electric signal in fiber communication in fiber communication the data will be transferred in the form of light signal that is a one of the biggest differences between electric communication and fiber communication electric communication the signal of the data travel in the form of electric signal in fiber communication the data will travel in the form of light signal okay what is the second difference between the two anybody have any idea which one you think will be the faster the electric communication or the fiber communication yes students remember that electric communication is actually in the form of electric signal so electric communication is slower than the fiber because fiber it travels with the speed of light so when something is happening with the speed of light that communication is very fast so you can say electric communication is slower than the fiber communication as so yes. the definition of fiber the basic definition of fiber communication is the signal travels at the speed of light right that's it no no it's not a display of light the data is traveled in the form of light that's what it is your data is traveling with the speed of light or you can say your data is travel in the form of light okay in fiber communication the data is traveled in the form of light while in electric communication your data travel in the form of electric signal or you can say current all right so electric communication is slower than the fiber communication that is the first thing and on the other side fiber communication is very fast communication as compared to electric signal as data transfer in the form of light signal okay any problems guys no what about the third which is very very important the third one is very important and third one is what do you think in electric signals there is a data loss or not what do you think remember that when there is a fiber communication because light travels inside the fiber there is a very small or no data loss while in electric signal it's very hard and you will have a data loss so you can say elect in electric signal in electric communication there will be more data loss on the other side in fiber communication 
देर विल बी लेस और नो डेटा लॉस अंडरस्टूड गाइस एनी क्वेश्चन इफ यू हैव एनी क्वेश्चन लेट मी नो वी ऑलरेडी डिस्कस वट इज रिफ्रैक्शन राइट दैट वेन लाइट गोज फ्रॉम वन मीडियम एंड इट विल गो इन टू एन अदर मीडियम राइट दैट इज वट वी कॉल्ड एज रिफ्रैक्शन द पॉइंट इज फॉर रिफ्लेक्शन when we were talking about which optical instrument is used for the reflection can you tell me the name of this optical instrument which perform reflection no one a knows mirror? yes it was a mirror right and here whenever you are talking about a optical instrument which is used for the refraction we always talk about lens so this is the lens we are talking about lens is an instrument which is used to perform a refraction now there are two types of lenses and we will start working on this one is called as converging lens or and there is another name for that we called it convex lens so convex lens and converging lens means the same okay now if we proceed further i will come back to this in a minute but first convex lens is this there is another lens we give it a name and there is a name for that and we called it so there actually we will talk about that in a minute that lens is called as concave lens con cave lens and that lens is also called as diverging lens so there are two types of lenses one is called as converging lens and the other one is called as diverging lens these two lenses are actually performing your refraction now how they are performing for that reason i will show you my working and that will be actually stored in it so you can have this recording after the class from the coordinator if you want okay so the point is what exactly it what let's see so what exactly is with let's see what exactly is this okay now two lenses convex lens and the second lens is called as concave now what are these let's talk about them one by one let's talk about convex lens first the shape of a convex lens is like that this is a convex lens. it's like curvy surface here and curvy surface here how do we explain that very simple these are your edges and this is your center right so you can say first point or bullet point is lens is thick from the center and thin from the edges from here it's thin from center it's thick all right if i draw a concave lens at this point i will show it to you you will understand that 
concave length is like this. What is the major difference between a convex and a concave here? If you see that. Yes, Ibrahim. Sir, the shapes are different. So you can say concave lens. So I can say lens is thin from the center and thick from the edges. Okay, so lens is thin from the center and thick from the edges. Now what else? Remember, both are used to develop the images. So you will have object and for object you will have image for that. Now at this point, I will give you a difference between real image and virtual image. Anyone knows what is mean, meant by real image and what is meant by virtual image? So real image is the object that is uh, that is used and the uh, virtual image is the object that is being displayed. Okay. The first thing always remember whenever you whenever the image is formed, there are two types you can have it. Either the image is erect or either the image is inverted. If the image is inverted, it's real. When the image is erect, it's virtual. So the first difference between real and inverted, uh, I mean real and virtual images, that real image is, it is always Uh, inverted. Real image is always inverted. It means that your eye and my eye develop actually a inverted image of every object. Do you know that? In our eyes, all the objects, whatever you see, are inverted. I mean, actually, the object you see, the image formed at your retina is in inverted. The question is, how come you see those images in a straight? If your retina made that image or that made those images inverted, what's your answer for this? Yes, students. Because if the image is real and definitely our eye ma made an image, real image, how come your inverted image be straight and it can be seen straight? Remember that our mind made it straight. So basically, even our eye made that image inverted. Okay. So our eye made inverted image of it. Okay. Because it made a real image. Virtual image, it is always erect. Any proper equipment in your mind which made a virtual image, can you give me a name of it? Virtual image equipment which actually made a virtual image. Yes, anyone? My question is, what about the plane mirror? The mirror you have, we have in our house. What do you think? What type of image your plane mirror made? Remember that image formed by the plane mirror 
is virtual erect and flipped flipped is not necessary to write but rest of the two things are important erect and virtual the real image they are formed by convex lens real image except in one case in one case it does an unreal or you can say virtual image boys and girls any questions regarding this any question no sir ibrahim ashad yumna no my point is actually what does no. it yeah what does it mean by the real image actually this is the quality of it that this is inverted this is formed by the convex this is done but what exactly is real image and what exactly is virtual image is it real image means that really it is and virtual image means it doesn't actually exist is that a real and virtual means i mean in that sense actually remember that real image Is, so what is the object example for a real image that's what i'm saying i will just let you know give me example real image is formed by the actual intersection of light remember that when light is actually intersecting you will have a real image while the virtual image virtual image is formed by the virtual intersection of light now very interesting fact which is a major difference between real and virtual is that real image real image can be shown on the screen while virtual image cannot be shown on the screen <coughs> this is the major difference between the real image and the virtual image now can you give me any example of the objects or the equipments which are actually working on a real image or gives you a real image any of any particular equipment or tools any ideas anyone if you want to see that just think about it that those images which are actually achieved on the screen any equipment any tools examples camera projector photocopier these are all the devices which actually works on a real images because all the images can be easily you can get it get those images on the screen on the other side these images the best example is magnifying glass this image you cannot obtain on a screen so guys any question related to the real and virtual images so what's the second point of virtual image the second point is the is image formed by the plane mirror is a virtual and erect
erect means straight it's not yes, the first point in Im a virtual image is formed by virtual uh, oh, what is it it's a virtual intersection intersection oh. we will see once we will be drawing it that how this virtual intersection happen actual intersection means there will be a actual light that intersect each other to give you an image okay any questions related to real and virtual difference no sir good now let's come back can you explain the third point in the image which one third point in the image you mean virtual image is formed by the virtual intersection this one um no uh, real image is yeah real image is formed by the actual intersection of like there are two things real image is formed by the actual intersection of light you will see in a few minutes or maybe in the next class we will draw the image and you will find out that what is meant by the real intersection i will let you know don't worry about this i will explain it to you okay once the second is real image can be shown on the screen see these are the equipment that give you name camera projector photocopier once they make the image you can see it on the screen you know tv screen sometime or on the main screen that's what the cinema is all about you know cinema cinema image is a real image and that can be shown on the screen remember that while on the other side you can't make or you can't project the magnifying glass image on the screen impossible it's not possible because it's a virtual image what exactly is the difference between it once we draw the image you will understand more okay because that topic we are just on the go because it's just there so i it, i was thought it was better to you know give you a difference between a real and the virtual image at this point okay now let's talk about convex lens which we were talking about convex lens is like this so it is thin from the center and thick from the edges all right now we also called it converging lens can you tell me what is meant by converging anybody have any idea what is meant by converging uh the light uh converges see i tell you you know the good thing about a convex lens is let's suppose this is convex lens now if there are multiple light rays are coming in after refraction they all meet at one point like this okay it was like they all meet at one point like for example if this is your convex lens and if multiple rays are coming in like that after refraction they meet at one point so if you see this is meeting all the light meeting at one point so what is the definition of converging lens a lens in which all the light rays after refraction converge or meet or meet at one point this is what we called as convex lens as far as concave lens is concerned that will be the phenomena check if this is a convex lens oh sorry concave lens when light actually comes to concave lens after refraction it will diverge like this so light will never meet here after refraction so what do we do we extend the light at back 
I will draw this diagram and it will look like that light is coming from one point. Actually, this point doesn't achieve, but we believe that yes, that it looked like light is coming from this point. So here, that meeting point is real because actually lights are intersecting at one point while in concave length actually light is dispersing or you can say spread all over after refraction but when you move it back it looked like they are coming from one point so here the light intersect really and here light intersect virtually so you tell me which lens actually draw the real image and which lens actually draw the virtual image? Guys. Converging lens draws real image. See, converging lens actually draw the real image except in one case which we will be talking after in the next one. While virtual image or you can say this lens which we called as concave lens it is also named as a diverging lens. Why we call it diverging lens? Because after refraction, light spreads. But when you proceed it backward, it looked like they come from one point. And that is the reason this is a dotted line because this is not the real point of intersection. But this is a virtual point of intersection. Because it is a virtual point of intersection. So here we call it, that's not the real intersection of the light rays, but a virtual intersection of the light rays. All right. Understood? Yes, yes, sir. Everybody understood the today's lecture? Ibrahim, Ashtar? Certainly, it's still concave lens again. See, it is totally the reverse of convex lens. In convex lens, light after refraction meeting at one point, all the light rays here. So this is the real intersection because after refraction light meet. But my question is, Ibrahim, after refraction, does you does it look like light meeting or it spreads? It spreads. No point is, I am saying that virtually they are intersecting. So what we do, when we proceed the light backwards on the same side where the object is, it looks like they come or they come from one point. Now they meet, but they meet virtually because it is not the real point of intersection. So here the point of intersection is real. Here the point of intersection is non-real. So this lens which actually diverge the light rays, we called it concave lens. The top one is called converging lens or convex lens. All right. Understood? Yes. Yes. Okay, guys. So today's lecture, we will finish it here. Inshallah, next lecture, we will start from here. And please come on time. And I am start recording it. I already told you. So you can have speak or spoken to a uh, coordinator regarding the, uh, what do you call it, uh, recorded lectures. If somebody miss any class, you can have those lectures. All right? Okay, sir. Okay. Take care. Bye. Okay. Allah, Allah sir. Allah, sir.